Hello there, it's Mallory here with All About Cats, and in this week's video we're taking a look at cats and plants. Which plants are going to be safe for you to have in your house with your cats, and which of them are you going to want to avoid? Let's jump into it. Now, before I get into my list of five plants that are going to be safe and five plants that are toxic, I want to mention that, of course, this is not a comprehensive list, right? If you want more information on the extensive world of plants that are and are not safe for cats, I would encourage you to look at the description. I'll put a link to the ASPCA's list of plants that are toxic and non-toxic to cats, as well as some other resources from the All About Cats website. With that being said, I did want to introduce you to a few popular and noteworthy um, plants that are, and of course, are not safe for cats. So let's start with the ones that are safe for cats. The first plant that I want to talk about that's safe to have in your home with cats is roses. So as long as it's a true rose, not some other plant that happens to be called a rose like desert roses, primroses, and Christmas roses, true roses are safe to have around your cat. There are a few things to think about. One is you wanna make sure that your bouquet doesn't contain anything else that might be harmful to your cat. For instance, this bouquet I'm showing here has baby's breath in it. I looked it up, the ASPCA says that it's non-toxic. And while there are some instances where if your cat eats too much baby's breath, they might experience some irritation, it's generally considered, again, to be safe for cats. But of course, you want to make sure that you're not getting a bouquet of roses that also contains something that's not safe for your cat. The other thing to think about is, of course, it's going to be thorny. So if your cat is really curious, they might get poked by one of those thorns. Um, but again, most cats are not going to take that much interest in a rose anyway. So you should be pretty safe. The second safe plant that I want to talk about is going to be uh, of interest, especially if you like planting succulents and other really easy, low maintenance plants in your house, and it is Haworthia, also known as zebra plant. It's characterized by these pointy leaves with kind of wart-like white protrusions on them. And Haworthia is perfectly safe for cats. You can have it around your cat. They can even nibble on it a little bit and they'll be okay. Now, fortunately, Haworthia is far from the only uh, easy maintenance succulent plant or cactus that is safe for cats. I will put a link to a list of succulents that are safe for cats in the description, so you can refer to that. You should be able to get a nice selection of succulents that are safe for cats and keep them in your home. The third plant that I want to talk about is snapdragons. So typically these are going to be grown outside rather than indoors and they're safe for cats. So all types of snapdragons, whether you're looking at common snapdragons, lesser snapdragons, or withered snapdragons are going to be safe for cats. Even if your cat takes a little nibble of this plant, um, they're going to be okay. My fourth plant is going to seem a little bit obvious, I think, but um, it's a little bit more interesting than it might appear at first glance. So it is cat mint. Cat mint is safe for cats. Now, Cat mint and catnip are both members of the genus Nepeta, but there is a difference. These two words are often used interchangeably, but there are two different plants. Uh, catnip or Nepeta cataria and then cat mint are different plants. While catnip has this cool effect on cats and can in many cats create uh, kind of an altered mental state, um, cat mint does to a lesser extent. Some cats react to it, most of them don't. The other difference with cat mint is that it grows these cool, nice looking, dusty, kind of purple, blue flowers that can make it a really nice addition to an outdoor garden and you can also plant it inside. So you get kind of a win-win situation where maybe your cat's going to get some use out of it, um, just like catnip, and also you get to look at this nice pretty plant. Of course, you can also grow catnip. That's going to be a great option if you have cats. Um, but I did want to point out that cat mint is also going to be an option. And finally, another one that has the word cat in the name and might seem kind of obvious, it is cat grass. So cat grass is not a particular type of grass. Rather, it's a term that we use to refer to a variety of grasses that tend to be appealing, safe, and kind of nutritious for cats. So types of grass that you're often going to see in a cat grass kit or cat grass seed mix are oat grass, barley grass, flax grass, uh, and wheat grass. These are kind of the most common that you're going to see. 
and all of them tend to grow these kind of soft uh, moisture rich blades that really tend to appeal to cats. There are a few nice things about growing cat grass. One is that if you have other plants in the house, safe plants, but your cat is still nibbling on them and you don't want them to be damaged, planting a little pot of cat grass can help to deter them from that. Another nice thing about cat grass is that it provides some stimulation in an indoor environment. And finally, growing cat grass is really easy and convenient. So you can find cat grass seeds and cat grass growing kits in pet specialty retail stores. You can of course find it easily through retailers online. You can also find it in some hardware stores. If you just look around, you're probably going to see it in a lot of the stores that you frequent most often. And it's also very easy to grow and maintain. So a lot of reasons why you should be growing a little pot of cat grass. Now, moving on to plants that are toxic to cats. The first one that I'm going to mention is probably one that you've heard about if you're familiar with this world of cats, and that is lilies. True lilies like Easter lilies, tiger lilies, Asiatic lilies, uh, Japanese show lilies, uh, and some others are going to be toxic to cats, and in fact, severely toxic. Now, lilies and their relationship with cats are interesting. We don't exactly know why, but all parts of the lily plant are toxic to cats and they can cause acute kidney failure. So if your cat ingests pollen, leaves, or petals of the lily plant, they could again experience acute kidney failure. This makes it particularly frightening because again, cats usually don't take that much interest in nibbling on plants unless they're kind of frondy and appealing like cat grass or spider plants. But the problem with lilies is that this doesn't really offer that much protection. Because the pollen of a lily is also harmful, your cat could just brush up against it, get some pollen on their body, and then groom it off. And they would still get exposure to that pollen and still potentially experience that kidney failure. Overall, this is just not a plant that you're going to want to have in the house. The next plant that I want to mention is uh, rhododendrons. So these are typically going to be grown outside. They're kind of shrubby plants usually. And cats most often are not going to take that much interest in them, but they are quite toxic. So all of the different types of rhododendron plants contain gyanotoxins, which can disrupt the sodium channels affecting the heart. So cats who ingest them can experience heart issues um, and it can be really, really problematic. The third toxic plant that I want to talk about is one that I find kind of interesting. So aloe vera gel is safe for cats. So the gel inside of the aloe vera leaf is used in a lot of different cat specific products like shampoos, cleaning wipes, things like that. That being said, the latex or sap inside of the leaf is not safe. This material contains saponins, which can cause uh, diarrhea and stomach cramping overall not, not a good time. So if you're growing an aloe vera plant in your home, there is a chance that your cat could take a bite and get exposed to that white layer on the inside of the leaf. And again, it's not a good thing. Um, so overall, this is a plant that you should probably avoid uh, keeping in your home if you have cats. The next plant that you're going to want to avoid is Kalanchoe, also known as mother-in-law plant. There are over 125 different species in this genus. Um, and while not all of them are toxic to cats, um, I've read that it's generally considered ideal to consider all of them toxic just to be on the safe side. Identification can be a little bit challenging. The reason why you want to avoid this plant is because it contains cardiac glycosides, which in short affect the heart and can cause heart problems if ingested. Um, so again, it's a really popular plant, um, one that's commonly used as a house plant, but you're going to want to avoid it if you have cats. And finally, the last plant that you're going to want to avoid if you have cats, at least on this particular list, is chrysanthemum. So there are many different species of chrysanthemums, but some of them contain pyrethrins. Interestingly, pyrethrins are commonly used in flea treatments for cats. Uh, they have the ability to affect an insect's nervous system and it makes them an effective insecticide, um, again, that is used to kill fleas. Um, while pyrethrins are generally considered safe for cats and they're only mildly toxic, their synthetic equivalent, pyrethroid, is not safe for cats and is only used in flea treatments for dogs. And so this is a large part of the reason why you should never let your cat use 
flea treatments intended for dogs. And having said all of that, chrysanthemums are mildly toxic to cats, and you're generally going to want to keep your cat away from them. Now, again, it's unlikely that a cat is going to eat enough of a chrysanthemum to have ill effects, but some particularly sensitive cats could definitely have issues. I've heard that a cat can also get contact dermatitis just from touching a chrysanthemum. So this is generally a plant that you're going to want to avoid. It is listed on the ASPCA's list of plants that are toxic to cats. So again, there are many, many, many more plants that fall into these two camps, safe and unsafe, and you can certainly create a home of house plants or a cat-friendly garden with all of the many plants that are safe. And similarly, there are a lot of plants that you're going to want to avoid um, taking home if you have a cat. So again, you can check out the links in the description for more resources and to learn more. So I hope that you found this helpful and that it gave you a little bit of a better idea of which plants are going to be an acceptable choice in your home. If you did find it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and let us know about it in the comments. If you would like to further support the All About Cats channel and allow us to continue creating content that helps to inform cat guardians and help people give their cats better lives, you can check out the newly opened All About Cats merch store. So in that store, you're going to find a lot of cool cat-inspired items, including the shirt that I'm wearing here, and purchasing it will help to support our mission of helping people give their cats better lives. So whether you support the channel by just watching a video or purchasing something from the store, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for your support, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.